All right, everyone, let's get started. Uh, welcome to the theater session on SQL Data Warehouse tips and tricks. My name is Kevin. I'm a PM on the SQL Data Warehouse team. And before we get started, can I just get a quick raise of hands on who here is using SQL Data Warehouse? Anyone? Anyone in production? Are you guys in production or just trying it out? OK, so for this session, we'll be covering the high level um, best practices with a service but diving into how to seamlessly apply them given the tools at our disposal today. So from a high level view, these are the SQL Data Warehouse best practices for high performance and high availability. So the first is you should create, uh, create and update statistics. Um, SQL Data Warehouse, we have a cost-based query optimizer that evaluates the pl multiple plans per query. And using statistics, it will select the most efficient plan and thus have faster execution. So the more the QO knows about your data using statistics, the faster the query performance will be. So first, create and update statistics. Enable auto-create stats. This will use the default sampling rate of about 20%. And also add multi-column statistics for joins on multi-columns um, or predicates. The second best practice is around selecting a proper table distribution. Um, SQL Data Warehouse, we have a massively parallel processing architecture where the data is distributed across multiple distributions. And the table distribution specifies how that data is laid out across your data warehouse. Mainly, the thing here to keep in, keep in mind is when you're thinking about your workload, your data, and the queries that you're executing, you want to choose the proper table distribution to minimize data movement and reduce data skew. We also announced replicated tables about a few months ago as well. So make sure if you have dimension tables in your data warehouse or your data model, make sure you um, replicate those tables to reduce data movement and shuffle movements. Third, you want to make sure you maintain high quality CCI row groups. So for SQL Data Warehouse, typically your large tables, your large fact tables are cluster columns or indexes. Um, your, your workloads are typically analytical workloads that are column based. So you also so you want to make sure you're there to define a CCI and you have high-quality row groups to maximize compression and limit remote I.O. And to have high-quality row groups, what you want to do is ensure that you provide enough memory when you load into your data warehouse. And that's dictated by your resource class and your DWU. And lastly, around high availability, uh, we recently announced user-defined restart points. And user-defined restart points enables you to initiate backups before large modifications to your data warehouse. We also, this week, we announced the preview of maintenance schedules. So typically, you would, um, you would define a primary window and a secondary window, and you would not be maintained outside of those windows. And these two features um, are, were very highly requested by our large enterprise customers, given that they wanted more control on when these system processes were happening. And so these are kind of the high-level best practices. And in this space of best practices, our team has been investing in around self-managed data warehouses so that you don't have to worry about this, right? So for creating update statistics, we have auto update coming in the next few months. And most recently, we just announced auto index rebuild and aggressive tuple mover for column store. So over time, you will have high quality row groups. So in terms of statistics and, and row groups, these are kind of lower in priorities in terms of what you have to keep in mind when you're managing and tuning your data warehouse. So again, this is, is the high level overview around best practices with SQL Data Warehouse. Um, I won't be diving into the details of each of these best practices in this session here. They're all detailed in our online documentation today. But I do want to cover the tools that are available today, like the Azure portal and Azure Data Studio, and how to apply these best practices seamlessly. And the first one is data warehouse recommendations. Who here has heard of Azure Advisor or Data Warehouse Intelligent Insights? OK. So lately, we've been investing in around built-in intelligence with SQL Data Warehouse. And we've been setting up the infrastructure to provide uh, recommendations to you directly in the portal. So how does, this, how does this work? So for every SQL Data Warehouse instance you provision today in production, we set up an infrastructure to collect telemetry from your data warehouse, running analytics on top of that telemetry, and we're serving recommendations directly for you within the Azure portal. So internally, we're actually running a SQL Data Warehouse doing analytics on the telemetry that your data warehouses are emitting to provide you these recommendations. And currently today, we support three recommendations. And we are going to um, incrementally release um, a few more in the coming months. But currently, right now, we support data skew detection. We support um, no statistics. So if you haven't created statistics on your tables that are frequently queried, um, we will provide you a notification. And if you have outdated statistics, we will also notify you as well in the Azure portal. 
Are there any questions around Azure Advisor? All right, I do want to do a quick walkthrough of how to discover um, recommendations in the Azure portal and how we can seamlessly apply them directly in the, um, the query editor within the portal. So here, as you can see, I have, I logged in, I'm at my Azure dashboard. On the left-hand side here, you should see Azure Advisor. Clicking on this, I will pin Azure Advisor to my dashboard so it's easily accessible next time I go to the portal. And this view here, this renders all the recommendations you have for all the resources under all the subscriptions that you have access to. So in this case, for SQL Data Warehouse, we have recommendations for performance. So going to the performance blade, you can see here, I have three types of recommendations for SQL Data Warehouse. We have, again, update statistics, create statistics, and whether or not you have data skew um, within your data warehouse. Clicking one of these, it will show all my impacted data warehouse instances and the number of tables that are impacted. And what's, what's great about this as well is that you can also download your recommendations as CSV and PDF files to send to your team. Um, you can also have, you have deep links that take you to our online documentation that goes, into fur, goes more into details to why this recommendation was provided to you. Um, we also upload our T-SQL scripts for you to automatically generate these recommendations um, on, on your own. You can also go to our concept documentation to kind of just describe what are statistics in case you're not familiar with the concept. And you also have postponing a recommendation or just deleting it. There's some, there's some scenarios where data skew is inevitable, so uh, you might want to leverage the postpone functionality to hide your recommendation. And what's great about this portal integration as well is you can actually drill into that data warehouse resource and leverage the query editor directly in the Azure portal without having to use SMS, SSDT, or Azure Data Studio to connect and determine which tables are impacted by lack of statistics for this scenario. So in this case, I already logged in. Um, I have access in Azure Active Directory, so it, it immediately connected to my data warehouse. I could check immediately if I have statistics enabled auto create statistics. As you can see, it's not, so enabling it. Let's see. As you can see, immediately enabled statistics. So the query editor is very lightweight. Um, it's great for uh, SQL that, uh, your queries that, le that runs less than five minutes long. Um, and you can also, Again, in our GitHub, we provide the T-SQL provided to um, service recommendation as to which tables were impacted when we provided you um, that specific recommendation. And as you can see here, we'll have stat info, which will list out outdated statistics, missing statistics, or if you have data skew. Okay, so who here has heard of Azure Data Studio? We just, or SQL Operations Studio. Okay, so recently uh, we announced the GA of SQL Operations Studio and it's rebranded now at Azure Data Studio. And what's great about Azure Data Studio is that it's a great query editing experience and it also provides you um, insights um, or essentially uh, widgets and extensions within the tool to surface insights to monitoring and tuning your data warehouse. And currently, we provide an insights extension called Azure SQL Data Warehouse Insights, where it will enable you and render widgets and views to um, help monitor and tune your data warehouse and apply those best practices we just went over. So I do want to do a quick walkthrough of Azure Data Studio as well. So I have Azure Data, ready, Azure Data Studio already installed. Go in the left-hand nav here. You can go to the extension marketplace. As you can see, there are multiple um, inside or extensions that you could download today and install. I already have Azure SQL Data Warehouse installed here. And here um, in the marketplace, it will show you, we have links to um, our SQL scripts that are backing these widgets within this inside extension. And it's also open source, so you can also contribute th to this extension to render new views for the community. So going to um, a data warehouse that I've connected to already, right-clicking on a data warehouse and clicking Manage, it should take you to 
your home page where it will list out all your tables and it will have an automatic tab here that will render insight widgets um, regarding your data warehouse. In this case, it will show a widget showing my latest backup, user activity, so active session, active queries, how many loads happened in the last 24 hours, um, road group quality or trim reason count. This here is for enabling high quality road groups. So if you see memory limitations or um, dictionary size, trim reason counts, you know to allocate more memory when you load into your data warehouse. This here is the same T-SQL script I just executed in the portal query editor, where it directly correlates to the recommendations you have in the Azure portal. So you can just download this, this extension as well and see your impacted tables. We also have a visualization for data SKU. So um, again, SQL Data Warehouse, we have 60 distributions. Your data is laid out across each of these um, databases or shards, if you want to think of it that way. As you can see here, I have some SKU here, so you might want to I might want to reevaluate my table distribution, specifically my distribution key for my distributed tables. Another very helpful view here is memory grant required. This here is telling me how much memory I need to allocate per my load user to have high quality row groups. And what's awesome about this widget as well, if you click on the top right here and click on run query, you can immediately see the T-SQL that's backing these widgets. And you can modify them as much as you want and easily modify the chart to how you want to visualize the data. So in this case, horizontal bar, yeah, vertical. All right, are there any questions around Azure Data Studio or the extension? All right. And again, it is open source, so we always, we're always looking for people to contribute to this extension and enabling additional insights um, that they find useful. And the last topic we want to cover is configuring maintenance windows and initiate user-defined restore points. Again, maintenance windows we just announced this week in preview. So for maintenance windows, the key thing is predictable and controllable downtime. You configure directly in the portal your primary and secondary window, and you're guaranteed not to go down within those windows. Maintenance period does last for a few minutes, depending on whether or not you have a lot of query activity. So um, best practice around maintenance windows is ensure you have a QES system during those maintenance windows, wait maintenance windows periods. It is also seamlessly integrated in Azure monitoring services, such as resource health check. So using the resource health check, you could check um, the progress of your maintenance within that window. We have maintenance notifications. So you will receive a 24-hour email or alert before a maintenance period begins and when it completes. And it's also seamlessly available to configure in the Azure portal or PowerShell. Next, user-defined resource points. We just we announced this a few months ago. Um, you can initiate snapshots to create user-defined resource points in the Azure portal or PowerShell. And again, it's a safeguard against user recovery for oops recovery, and um, you should take it before you have large modifications to your data warehouse. Reduce, it does support a seven-day retention period similar to automatic snapshots. And in total, we support 42 user-defined restore points by default. And then finally, we also made some enhancements around the restore process with SQL Data Warehouse, where we guarantee a less than 20-minute same region restore for any data size, from terabytes to, multi to hundreds of terabytes with, the, with SQL Data Warehouse. Also, what's not called out here is you can also use user-defined restore points to do cross-region restores. Um, before, we only supported geo backup and restoring um, using a geo backup, which offered a 24 RPO. But for user-defined restore points now, you can initiate, you can immediately initiate a user-defined restore point and immediately restore across regions. All right, and I do want to do a quick walkthrough of user-defined restore points and maintenance schedules. So in the Azure portal, let's get rid of these blades. In the Azure portal, I'm going to go to one of my data warehouse instances. And to configure maintenance schedules, all you need to do is go to the settings blade here or in the essentials panel and set your primary and secondary window. Again, we will try to maintain you through your in the primary window. But if for any reason we can't, we'll use the, sec the secondary window. And typically, you want to select a time throughout the week where 
you will have downtime or you can have a QES system that's, um, that's just when there's no heavy activity. And as simple as that, in, in seven clicks, you can configure maintenance schedules for your data warehouse. When you have maintenance in progress, again, we will alert you 24 hours before a maintenance period starts. You can use the resource health check within the Azure um, SQL Data Warehouse Overview Blade, where you can see previous maintenance events that happened and how long it took. So in this case, for this Data Warehouse instance, a maintenance period took about five seconds and it was, um, and before it was immediately available. And I also mentioned that you can create alerts on top of your Data Warehouse uh, maintenance notifications. So if you go to Azure Monitor, you go to Service Health and Health Alerts, you can configure alerts before you have maintenance on your data warehouse. And in this case, it's a very seamless experience where you can create an alert, define details, and what's awesome about this is that you have action groups within um, the Azure portal, where creating action groups, you can define what kind of actions you want to happen when you receive a maintenance uh, notification. So you can, you can get emails, so email to your team, you can get a text, you can create Azure functions to quiesce your entire system. And that's, that's really great about Azure is that we're seamlessly integrated with a whole bunch of different services within the Azure ecosystem. So Azure functions can be used to quiesce your system, um, perhaps pause it or um, ensure that no other users connect to your data warehouse. Other than that, are there any other questions? We have a few minutes left. Q&A, that was a pretty quick theater session. Does anyone have any questions around best practices with SQL Data Warehouse? Um, anything with Azure Data Studio, tools available. Feel free to come up. Um, I also have socks, so if anyone has any, wants any socks, feel free to come up and uh, I'll hand them out. Um, and yeah, thank you for attending this theater session. Thank you.